I'll tell you, when I see Fox News, Fox News come out and the headlines on Fox News say that Russia and China may be preparing for gold-backed currency, but expert assures U.S. dollar safest currency today. Sure it is, today, until they issue that gold-backed currency. And then everything that is in the deep rest recesses of, of the darkest nightmare you can have financially, they start to come true. I hate to say that, but it is true. And when you get little crumbs by the elite like this, on top of all of the de-dollarization, the remover, removal of counterparty risk, and the insider selling on strength in the equity markets, and all of these things happening, on top of everything else, uh, you know, buckle up is all I can say. And you were warned, and you were warned a lot. And you got to do it before your eyes confirm what your gut is telling you is coming. Hi, I'm Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and this is the Miles Franklin Weekly Special for November 1st through November 8th, 2022, while supplies last. This week we feature two silver specials. First, we have 2023 Silver Britannia at only $7.89 over spot. Now, while the Royal Mint has already started minting King Charles commemorative coins, this first run of 2023 Britannia still features the portrait of Queen Elizabeth II. Next, we have 90% silver at $11.49 over spot. Prized for its recognizability, easy divisibility, and liquidity, constitutional or junk silver is also in short supply. As Andy Schechtman says, they're not making any more of it. Our constitutional silver is mixed, meaning it may come as dimes, quarters, or both. But either way, it has the same silver content and is only $11.49 over spot per ounce while this batch lasts. Our number for all orders is 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We're always glad to have this returning guest. Andy Sheckman is the CEO of Miles Franklin Precious Metals. He joins us for this weekly market update, Tuesday, November 1st, 2022. Andy, thanks for coming back on Liberty and Finance. Good to be here, Don. Again, thanks for having me. I guess if my math is right, eight weeks left. Uh, where the heck did uh, 44 weeks go, right? That's uh, pretty crazy how fast things are spinning, but... As always, as it has been the last 44 weeks in a row, it's great to be here and always good to uh, to see your smiling face. Actually, I was counting the other way. I was counting to see if we could make it alive through September and October because we've been warned by so many people that grave things could potentially happen with the credit markets, the, all kinds of things. Uh, now the latest thing when interviewing uh, Bill Holter a week ago talking about only a few weeks left of the U.S. diesel fuel supply that would affect trucking uh, trains and ships and that sort of thing. So uh, that's one of the concerns that we're keeping an eye on and, and clients are watching. There's just a lot of things running out. I mean, I, I've done some industry reading on the diesel fuel situation. It sounds like it's maybe not quite as black and white and dire as like the entire country running out of diesel, you know, 18 days from now kind of thing, but rather that they're uh, based on industry uh, sources that there will be regional uh, shortfalls in certain spot areas that will need to be covered from other areas and will result in dislocation of pricing and some delays and that sort of thing. But that actually the the diesel stockpile is at its lowest point since they started measuring it in 1942. So when you start to look across the board, as you do, about many things, you know, Alistair will, McLeod will tell us that uh, bank bank leveraging and gearing in the eurozone and in japan are higher than ever and and in recorded and, and inflation the highest in 42 years and and now we have uh, uh the the uh what is it the silver supply dropping on the comex to levels we haven't seen in how long and now the diesel supply and the and the domestic petroleum reserve you know uh, strategic petroleum reserve dropping and it just feels like all of this slow motion but not so slow perfect storm forming uh, in the world that that we inhabit people are asking well would this interfere with my delivery if I place an order now will you for sure be able to deliver it before things go off the rails 
it's a question that's difficult to answer when it's when it's into the into the unknown. But what do you tell clients when they ask you about continuity of availability of product and the ability to even deliver what they're ordering today, uh, you know, within the next month, that sort of thing? When you try to answer a question um, that seems to be straightforward, the things that you just said go into my mind. I'll give you an example. Um, You ever play golf? You're about to swing at the ball. You can have nine thoughts go through your head like that. The wind, a bug just flew by my ball, uh, the way the grass is. I mean, so many things can go into your mind in a split second. Now, when I try to give answers, to questions like that. So many things are going through my mind, like what you just said. And in my adult life, I don't remember there being so many things that were so chaotic from so many places in the world all at once coming out of a pandemic, coming out of massive money creation and low interest rates. And price discovery that's next to impossible and supply chain dislocations and and a a political uh, uh, sideshow, if you will, where the decisions that our politicians are making seem just to be the wrong ones, how we're continuing to go to countries like Venezuela and, and Saudi Arabia and beg for oil when we all but shut down oil production here in the states where we draw down our strategic petroleum reserves to super super low levels and it's there for time of war or need when the decisions that are being made by this country are by this administration uh, by our leaders are 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 creating havoc and simple questions like that that should have direct answers are impossible to answer because of what you just said. There are a million reasons why all hell could break loose and everything could fly off the tracks all at once. And it's not just the diesel shortage. That's just one of many. How about the fact that the whole world's waking up to inflation? How about the fact that, that you know, you got Fox News that just came out and said Russia and China may be preparing for gold-backed currency, but experts assure dollar safest currency today. The point of it is, is that all of these things are happening at the same time. And now you got the mainstream media saying what I've been saying to you guys for two years, that you're going to see a gold-backed currency in the BRICS nations. What does that mean? What happens if that happens? What happens to the dollar? What happens to trying to get precious metals? I mean, the, the diesel thing, yeah, it's it's concerning, but it's one of of a hundred different cracks in the in the in the dam that I mean, how many fingers and toes can you put up at once? So yeah, of course. I can't say to someone you're gonna get your product no matter what, if it's on its way in, if it's being delivered, because if anything that is that I've learned over the last couple of years, done again, is that anything can happen and things that you think will never happen seem to be happening every single day. And it's not just related to interest rates or to money creation. Uh, It's related to a whole hell of a lot more than that. And I think people are very scared across the entire globe. For the very first time in my career, people are scared. They are more Um, concerned than they are optimistic. Uh, They are frightened more than they are um, interested in making a return. And I think that is all adding to to the issue. And again, what we talked about yesterday, what really is concerning me about everything that is happening, and you can see things spinning in every different direction, is what's happening on the exchanges, where quietly, where price is blurring what's happening and is running cover, it's disappearing. Every single day, we see more and more and more metal drawn off of the exchanges, where 80 tons of gold were purchased by China in July, where 37 million ounces of silver were purchased by India last month. That's more than there's in the in the COMEX reserve. When I did this interview with you a week ago, I said there was 36 million ounces in the registered category. Now it's down to 34. It's being bled down 
every single day. It is being bled down by the biggest money in the world as the price is doing nothing. And what does that mean to your question, which was simple and straightforward? It means that everything that goes into answering that question has variability to it, from interest rates to um, to geopolitical issues, to political issues, to everything that's happening, supply chain issues, the diesel, the I mean, everything, it's all coming together at once. And this is why I believe there will be a moment, a moment of reckoning where people realize that the road to retirement may not be paved with stock certificates and mutual funds like it has been for the past 40 years. And I just think that a question like that is very difficult to answer. This is why I've been telling people, please get some, get a core position now, cost average once you get a core position, because it's not getting any easier. Like for example, when I have to be told that the, the refineries in Turkey are having a hard time getting product out because of geopolitical issues, when I have to be told that the refineries in Switzerland can't really guarantee too much because they don't know if they can keep the power on throughout the winter, these are things that are adding into the equation, not just what's going to happen if we run out of, of diesel. Um, what's going to happen if, if you know, there there's an escalation of war in the Ukraine? What does that do to the rest of Europe, where, where, where four of the six mints in the world are? So not an easy question to answer, but I think people can sense the, the increasing velocity at which things continue to happen. Things that years ago would have been a huge news story. Now they're just another piece of the, of the fabric of this crazy, this crazy blanket that we're all underneath. So I wish I knew how to answer that question better, but I do think a, a bird in the hand is worth X in the bush. And um, at this point, all bets are off as to what happens leading into the midterm and what happens after the midterm. And uh, what, is that, what does that mean for supply chains? What does that mean for availability? I don't know. I can only tell you that it's never been this hard ever in 33 years to tell you what's going to happen in a month from now because I, it's just complete and total variability and uh, uncertainty, even on this end where we're trying to find a, a shred or a sliver of something concrete to lock in on. Um, when I'm buying kangaroos from Australia that are 65 days out, that means I got to run logistics. I'm getting it over here on a ship and on a, on a, on a Brinks truck once it gets into, into Boston Harbor. I need to move it, and and all of this comes into play, plus the hedging of it and what's going on on COMEX. There's so much variability on every single metric that these questions are impossible to answer, and I think will only become more murky and murky and murky as uh, as time goes on until we see something that that you know shows a little bit of clarity. I haven't seen it in over a year. Gosh, so many things you just touched on. I wanted to follow up on a few of them. One was this drawdown, drawdown, drawdown. It, <laughs> uh, we've got the, uh, well, in the, got the opposite. We've got the runaway uh, national debt, and that's what Rick Rule reminds us about. It's just, it's just continuing to go up like a hockey stick. Um, but the drawdown of uh, petroleum is one thing, and you could, you could, Make it, you can extrapolate a line down and say, well, and that's going to be gone. And then you, the drawdown of metals on the major exchanges. Just a few weeks ago, we were talking about 40 million ounces. Then we were talking about 38 million ounces. Now we're talking about 36. And on down we go, 34. So it's like, okay, shoot. I mean, how many weeks left before that? Before we just that that's going to be hit a crisis point. Uh, Alistair McLeod keeps talking about the uh, gearing of these banks and how even a, even a few percent disturbance in certain uh, directions could cause serious uh, uh, lockups in the in the credit markets. Uh, so that's one one theme that I'm hearing is that we're in this. Sometimes you've called it the eye before the storm or whatever. We're in this moment where it seems comparative, weird, uh, not yet everything falling apart, and yet all the measurements by which you would say, what's our buffer? Our buffers are all disappearing. All of our safety buffers are all disappearing. Uh, secondly, um, people have been concerned about uh, counterparty risk increasingly. Uh, so delivery trucks was one, one starter question there. Another thing has been about vault storage or potential government nationalization. There's increasing concern on the parts of clients. Will How, how often is it possible that the government will uh, require all the records to be 
delivered and so then they'll have a list of everybody who purchased metal uh, how do we know that the vaults will be able to continue to operate in private as private vaults you know and, and as we, after we saw what happened to national uh, bank accounts in Canada that sort of thing so that's another big area of concern and distrust in a lot of people's minds is about this counterparty risk that they that they perceive and I guess that's why you say a bird in the hand um, is is worth X in the bush um, one of the things that I was hoping you could uh, dispel for people is concerns around product quality and product integrity because that's another one that they ask about is why should I pay up for government minted coins when the bars are cheaper that sort of thing and one of the reasons we've talked about that in the past with people is that well government minted coins come from a known source people know exactly where they came from they know their pedigree and there was this uh, high profile organization at the time standing behind product quality but when Miles Franklin sells uh, metals to our clients, how do they know that they're getting the real deal, and uh, how do they how are they protected from our uh, put the potential of anything being off in the product they, that they buy from us by our guarantee of satisfaction? Sure, I'll answer that question first, and I want to come back to your question about counterparty risk, um, or to your statement about it. Yeah, so you know, just about everything we buy. Well, if we're buying it, we're buying it from very well-established uh, refineries, uh, worldwide uh, known refineries. Almost all of them are LBMA approved refineries. What that means is those are bars and rounds that are made by these refineries that are approved by the London Bullion uh, Metals Association, which means they're good for IRAs. Um, uh, and the ones that are not IRA approved, like the CNT Eagle Bar, those, I mean, it's CNT is one of the largest distributors of metal in the world. So we're buying things from very large, well-known, respected, sovereign mints or distributors whose product is top-notch, who sends stuff in sealed boxes, strapped and sealed. If we buy stuff from the public, we have a series of of steps that that go through and of any of the the early steps that would would um, raise red flags as to the authenticity are are triggered then we we take that to the next level i mean we've done almost eight billion in sales done again and i can count on one hand the t uh, amount of times that i've seen anything that was counterfeit and a couple of the times that I saw things that were counterfeit, they were actually made of gold. They were two specific times they were trying to mimic high relief or high grade St. Gaudens that were made of real gold but were were mimics and um, but were easily detected. I mean in, in, in tens and hundreds of thousands of transactions one, two, three times. It's not something that is is as pervasive as people think. One of the reasons gold and silver have been money for over 5,000 years is that it's impossible, really, it's very difficult, especially in small sizes. It's one thing to buy a giant bar which could be hollowed out, you know, a 400 ounce gold bar, but when you're buying one ounce coins or even 10 ounce silver bars or one ounce silver rounds or whatever it is you're buying, it's very difficult to to mimic uh, the feel, the density, the weight of gold and silver um, and without it really altering the the way that it looks. So bottom line is, is that it's really not a big deal, but we, we have all of the tools and, and take all of the steps to to make sure. And we offer a, a you know, money back guarantee on everything we sell, satisfaction guarantee. So we're not, um, I'm not worried about that, but if you're buying on eBay, uh, if you're buying at a flea market, if you're buying on Craigslist, yeah, I guess there's always the chance that you could run into some trouble. Look, you buy from reputable companies. Now, as far as counterparty risk, I, I think that the governments would be a fool to, the US government would be a fool to confiscate gold. I don't think they will. I think instead they'll take the ETFs. When you talk about the ETFs, you have HSBC Bank administrating and running GLD. This is a bank that's paid billions in fines for manipulating things like LIBOR all the way down to laundering drug money. Um, and SLV administered by JP Morgan, who not only is allowed to administer the world's largest silver trust, but they, they run several other ETFs. And they just paid a 900 plus million dollar fine to the Justice Department. So what better way 
to confiscate metal than to suck it all into the ETFs that track attract all the fund money and the 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 investment money and then take it when the people are really not even allowed or practically can with any efficiency take uh, metal out of these accounts one of the things that makes me believe that you could see something is how much metal is being pulled out of the comex um, it's as if what could happen on comex is that they render it force majeure that you can no longer take physical possession until the inventories fill back up where it's cash settlement to me that's the same thing as as um you know as as it blowing up as it being uh, rendered um you know invalid um and maybe that's why you're seeing big money go to such lengths to take possession and pull it off of the comex market and you know it's interesting too that when you look at the acquisition of gold and silver by foreign countries, where is it coming from, right? You look at the bleed down of the London Metals Exchange and the COMEX showing huge amounts of metal being sent out, yet you look at the official numbers of gold that the U.S. supposedly has, it's never changed. So it's not coming, we're not selling them our gold, they're draining the COMEX, the biggest money around the world, and it's not just in North America, they're using the suppressed paper prices to, and, and the potential of something like that happening where counterparty risk will be an issue um, to, to get it out of the way. I don't really think it affects private vaulting. I don't think they're gonna come in and make holding gold and silver illegal because the people who hold it in this country represent such a minuscule percentage of the public that it, it just wouldn't be in their best interest, I think, globally, to do that and outlaw gold ownership again. I just, I can't see that happening when other countries around the world are openly promoting it to their citizenry. But I do think it's interesting to see on a very large scale from the very top on down that that those people are pulling off, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars worth at once, where in one day, 45% of all the kilos get delivered you know, 25 million ounces. Who's got that kind of money and where is it going? So there is truth in what you're saying. I don't think it's going to affect this industry as much as it will affect big platforms like the COMEX. Uh, it may affect the ability to sell metal efficiently if something like that happened and to hold large inventories. That's always a possibility. But to come in and nationalize private holdings of gold and silver that represent less than a half of 1% of anything that anyone in this country holds, I think would be um, penny wise and pound foolish on, on the uh, behalf of the government. I just don't see it being really an option. Another phenomenon that I wanted to check in with you on is more clients than ever before have been reporting difficulty in getting money out of the bank, either in sending bank wires to pay for precious metals orders or just even making cash withdrawals. And some say it hasn't been a problem. We've been doing informal polls during our live chats on our premieres of our videos each night just saying, hey, has anybody been experiencing this difficulty? But now it's hardly a week goes by that we don't end up with one or two clients reporting that they would have gotten us their bank wire days earlier, but it got held up because the branch manager had to come out and the regional manager had to come out and actually people being stared down, people being cross-examined, people being told, you really need to think about what you're doing. You need, how well do you know the company you're dealing with? You talk to your family members about this. Where are you planning on storing this metal? Just intrusive drilling questions in some cases from some banks and in fact it's coming from different areas of the country at the same time it's almost like when you see the same story being said with the same words on all the news channels at the same time you wonder if a memo went out to all the banks and saying watch out for this because this is happening and you need to really watch out for it now i know we participate and we're required to by law as part of our licensing and bonding is is in like anti-money laundering aml and and kyc know your client training and so banks have some of that same responsibility as well and they may have a legitimate reason for asking some of those questions some of the time but the fact that there's apparently this big uh, increase in the frequency of that kind of questioning that people are, are being scrutinized with. Uh, have you heard of that and seen that in your uh, client relationships as well? And do you know anything about what's where that's coming from at this time? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, you, you know, you put on your conspiratorial hat and you put that together with the mint being completely inefficient, a mint that has the, the capacity to produce roughly 5 million silver eagles a month 
uh, is is producing, you know, eighty five thousand a month. Um, where a mint that hasn't sold much in the way of gold eagles for the last few years now is is curtailing production of all gold by fifty percent, pushing premiums on gold eagles up above 11, 10, 11, 12 percent. I've never seen that in my career. So then you you pull that a step back and say, well, the banks are making it hard to get your money out, becoming very intrusive, making it difficult to wire. The whole system, it's almost as if um, in, in a coordinated fashion, it's to forestall a run on the currency, to to forestall people um, creating a run on the banks and destabilizing more than they already are. The banks, which already have very little in the way of reserves and are, are overextended than they are capitalized, you know, that's my conspiratorial hat. Um, I can tell you that these bank tellers are obviously told you need to do this. These bank tellers, um, if they feel something is even a little bit off, are told to fill out a SARS form, which is a suspicious activity report, which, um, you know, Dunnigan Kaiser came in and asked for $7,000 in $10 bills, and I found that to be unusual, so I'm going to report it. And most more often than not, that's probably just going to fly by. But, you know, you come in every single week taking out seven thousand dollars and maybe it becomes something bigger than it is. Um, I, I think it's real. Uh, I just think it's more of what I was saying earlier. There's just so many things that keep happening that never happened before that make you start to wonder. And you know, maybe it's even making the public start to wonder. It only reinforces a lot of the things that people that listen to you and I have been feeling for a long time. You know, I, going to a bank used to mean having a relationship with the banker and being treated a special way. Not, you know, I, I went to the bank myself, as an example. I may have told this story on your show. I don't know. I had two checks uh, one was from an equi uh, a um, uh, from when I moved from Minnesota here. I had, I had two thousand dollars left over from uh, one of the utility companies, and then I had another one that was also from when I moved. That was from uh, the what's it called the escrow account. So it totaled forty two hundred dollars, two checks, and I went to Truist Bank here down in Florida, and I you know I play in a golf game twice a week here, and everyone puts in forty bucks. Um, there's 20 guys or so we play skins and stuff. So I thought I'd, I'd like a bunch of 20s. So I, I told her, I said, I'll, I'd like, um, can I get cash? I'd like all 20s. And she said to me, you know, that's going to be a big stack. I said, that's okay. She says, what, what do you plan on doing with it? And it took everything I had to not really let her have it. Like it's none of your blank business, but I said, oh, I have plans for it. And then I watched her type what looked like an essay. I didn't see what she was saying, but whatever she was typing wasn't just doing what she needed to do to get me $4,200 in $20 bills. She was typing something out that that was suspicious, obviously. I think it's real. I don't know what the reason behind it is other than, you know, maybe there is a genuine concern that by the time people realize there's a problem, you know, um, getting money out of the bank and rushing to pull money out and uh, running to buy gold and silver from the U.S. Mint with dollars that will now be sold. I think these are all, you could put them all together and say, is it, are they connected? Is there a reason? Or is it just more of the, more of the craziness that is 2022? I don't know. But these are all the things put together that make me feel that ultimately there's going to be no supply left. Because if I feel this way now, what happens when the mainstream starts to feel this way and they're running because we're motivated as human beings by greed and by fear. And fear is the most uh, significant of all the motivational uh, factors. And I, I don't think people are scared yet. They're, they're concerned. They're uneasy. Um, I'm scared. I am. I am scared. I mean, I, I'm open to, to say that I'm, I'm frightened for the world my kids are growing up in. I'm frightened for the future. I am frightened to wonder what the future of this industry looks like, where, you know, we've reached a level of success and, and now getting product is far harder than getting clients. And I've been joking saying that, 
you know, kind of tongue in cheek, but it's way true. I mean, getting product is becoming next to impossible. So, you know, does it make sense that getting currency or getting your money out of the bank is difficult too? Yeah, it does to me. It fits part and parcel. Are they related? Don't know. But I think in a, in a, in a kind of roundabout way, they're all related and it all creates the same issue. And that is, it's time to be a contrarian or you're going to end up being a victim. I talked with Keith Weiner from Monetary Metals about this, and he was saying, well, as long as people who are involved in making those withdrawals from the bank to purchase metals and then it gets deposited back into the bank by the dealer, you're still in the bank. The, the funds have never left the banking system. So it's not a run on the bank. He said it's only when people take the, the funds out of the bank and, and you know hold it in some other asset that's like cash or whatever that's not in the banking system um, that that you're actually outside the banking system. So it, it's, uh, and I may be misquoting him exactly in this, but it, it he made me think about it a little bit more that just people withdrawing money to buy metals and then the, the dealer deposits it back in the bank or whatever uh, is still in, the, still in the banking system. Well, it's not really a run on the bank, but it is a run on the bank. It's a psychological run on the bank. It's not a physical. And yeah, it goes from one bank to another. But if, I mean, what do you hear over and over and over and over again? I hear it every day. I just don't want my money in the bank. I don't want my money in the bank. I don't want my money in the bank. I want it out of the bank now. And if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, I could buy a gold eagle. And that's that's no joke. And I know you understand that. You hear it too. So there is a general unease. So pulling money out of the bank to buy metal, in my mind, is a psychological run on the bank. It is not a physical run on the bank. If all the money is in the banking system, fine. But if it's held by, you know, you understand what I'm saying. It's not as broadly held as, as a form of safety. In all the years past, people used to say, well, you know, the dollar, everyone's running to the dollar right now because the dollar is a safe haven and people feel, people feel safe there. And I would question whether or not that really is the case. Yes, the dollar is super strong right now because the rest of the currencies around the world are a basket case. But let's talk about what that will, what that means just for one second. All these countries continue to, you know, jump into the dollar and and to buy bonds and create more strength for the dollar. And as we see rates continue to rise, uh, it, it's going to at some point create an, an a uncontrolled selling. Uh, of bonds, it has to. At some point, that the the uh, this this game is going to end badly because at some point, the insurance companies, the pension funds, all the managed money that is loaded up on bonds that have been buying bonds for years because it's been a thirty year bull market will have to start selling or they're going to be eviscerated. And as that happens, as as they sell and bond prices fall. You can see rates go higher and higher and higher. And so this is a very bad process, a very it's a reinforcing loop that that very quickly can get out of control, that very quickly can end this this folly that the dollar is so strong. It's strong in relation to the other basket case currencies. And yeah, it's working until it completely and totally breaks. And when does it break? It's gonna break, I think, as the Fed continues to raise rates, or we see a more concerted effort by countries to move away from the dollar. Uh, and it's going to happen like that. And it's going to snarl a lot of people who have been holding dollars because of its strength. But the relative strength here at home at the same time couldn't be less. It's a weird situation with dollars. But I see we're very close to that moment. They're talking about another 75 basis point hike. And uh, at what point do the, do the fund managers start to sell bonds? Because they are getting eviscerated. I don't know. It's coming. And that's when this whole situation ends very, very, very badly. We always ask you when you're here with us each week for the weekly market update to give us, if you can, a weekly market special. So uh, have you anything that you can offer special pricing on this week? Yeah, it's ridiculously hard. It wasn't hard, you know, really to find something over the last few years. It's getting really hard. Um, you know, we, we had bought 60 or 70 bags of junk silver for that promo last week. Premiums are pretty high on them. That's why we haven't sold out of them yet. So we're going to keep that on the table. 1149 over the price of silver for 
for the uh, pre-65 constitutional. And then we also have the 2023 Britannias, 789 over again. You know, I choke on that. Uh, but it is a special, and it should be uh, less expensive than 99.9% of the companies out there. And that's for any quantity that you want. So and premiums just continue to go higher and higher and higher. And I don't see them really abating at all in any respect. So that's what we have as as specials right now. Um, and, you know, it's almost hard for me to call it a special, but it truly, truly is um, a special. and. You know, I just want to leave people with with a couple of thoughts. You know, I keep coming here telling you about all the metal that's being drawn down off the COMEX and the LME. It's also important to know that, you know, just the other day we saw another every day we see metal being backdoored out of SLV. Two million five hundred and seventy eight thousand four hundred and sixty four ounces were taken out of of SLV on Friday, I believe. So when you put them all together, the ETFs. This is according to Ed Steer. You put together the ETFs um, and the the uh, platforms like COMEX and the London Metals Exchange. And on Wednesday of last week, in one day, 59,395 ounces of gold were taken off and 889,000 ounces of silver were taken off of the ETFs, the mutual funds, and COMEX and the London Metals Exchange. They're being bled down. And that's the most important thing that people need to understand. Everything that we talk about, these are, this is the periphery. What's really people need to focus on, um, at least in terms of supply, is what's happening at the highest level. And it's not just happening on COMEX. It's not just happening on the LME. When you see, you know, 2.6 million ounces of silver taken out of SLV, and that was the second day in a row we saw big, big uh, uh, withdrawals every day. This is a this is what I'm getting at. The biggest money is front running an event that is coming. Maybe that has that's reason why it's hard to get your money out of the bank. And I don't know, but I can tell you that I've never seen this tight a situation in the physical and wholesale market coupled with. The commercial banks being long in silver and a the the drawdown of supply everywhere, including the ETFs, quite the way that it is right now. I think we're setting up for some fireworks. I really, really do. And I think all signs are pointing to maybe, just maybe, the physical tightness in this market actually trumping um, or or winning out over um, the the derivative market. And that really is the way that it was intended, not the tail wagging the dog. And, and uh, maybe we're getting to that point. So I guess we'll have to see. Well, you alluded to that a moment ago when you talked about premiums going only one direction that's up and not seeming to be coming down anytime soon. That's one of the questions I forgot to ask you earlier because clients keep asking me that. Should they go ahead and go ahead and pay higher premiums than they've ever paid before. Especially the old timers are saying, hey, I never pay more than $3 over spot or $2 over spot or whatever. And it's like what you just said is is bringing some a spotlight to that. If there's a separation of the physical market leaving the spot price in the dust, is that what we're seeing? And is that what you expect to continue to see going forward? That's what we've seen since you and I started doing these shows together two and a half years ago. Um, and it's and what's really interesting about this done again, and I've been saying this since you and I started, had a lot of talks about it offline too, wondering should I continue to say this because I'm getting so much heat about it because I can feel it and see it. And um, in 2008, when everything disappeared, there was a definitive start and a definitive end. Bang, bang. And then here we are back to roaring again. This has been going on now. When I started talking about the others in 2020, this group that came out of nowhere that started bleeding the COMEX dry, this has been a, a very um, methodical drawdown of the world's supply. It's been done so in a way that is very patient, very methodical, very orderly, and, and very clandestine. And it has been, they have used the cover of suppression of prices to do this. And it's becoming very concerning because you can see it if you have an objective open 
high at this. And so I don't see it getting any better at all. I don't. In fact, it seems to be getting worse. And so, yeah, I think you do, unfortunately, have to do that. You know, let me just look at something here real quick, just to make a point. Um, you know, you brought this up last week. If someone was trading Silver Eagles right now into bars, we'd pay them 12 bucks. Wouldn't make a commission if they're just trading. If they're selling outright and didn't buy from us, we'll make something. But think about that for a moment. I am paying the public $12 over the price of silver to buy Silver Eagles. I can't hedge that. So what does that tell you about where premiums are truly going when for 30 years I never sold them over $3.5 ever, not once, over the price of silver? I'm now paying four times that nearly. So I think that, um, and that's from the public. So I, I think that, yes, you have to do that. But this is also why I have told people for the last almost two years to buy bars, 10 ounce, kilo, 100 ounce, and even 1,000 ounce, because I think the value you're getting in those bars is so much better than these coins. Does that mean that the premium is not going to stop rising in the coins? No, it doesn't mean that at all. But there does come a point where you start to marginalize you know, your your dollar spent. And I think it's about number of ounces that matter. And yes, flexibility is very important. But when you're paying such enormous premiums where, you know, $7 over spot is the cheapest you find a one ounce sovereign mint coin for, most of them going for eight, nine and above. This is, is this a new reality? I don't know. I can tell you that Silver Eagles have not come down since March of 2020. They really haven't. They've been over 10, 11 bucks over spot the entire time, you know, and now they're as much as 17 or 18 by most companies around the country. So, yeah, I think this is one of these deals where you just kind of need to uh, to unfortunately you're late. You're late to the party and you have to you have to dance with the girl that's there waiting to dance with you. And right now that that means paying a high premium. And if it changes, great. Um, you paid a little too much for some. And if it doesn't, it's only going to go higher and you're, you'll be glad you got what you did. Crazy times, no question about it. And I really do believe that it's only going to get crazier. And uh, I'll tell you that, you know, what also makes me more convinced that we will see uh, some sort of a big price rise is you have pretty darn close to as large of a short position as the managed money traders have ever had on COMEX, really close to its all-time high, they're always going to, yeah, they, they can certainly affect the market, but the commercial banks, which, you know, say what you want about them, they're certainly the most um, uh, sophisticated traders on the planet and well-funded. That means they're going long. And when you see the commercial banks reduce their short positions and increase their long positions as the managed money does the opposite, it tells me that you should expect a big rise. And then you look at the record short position as the price rises. Not only is it becoming hard to get product to cover, that will create a massive short squeeze. And maybe this is why you're seeing the drawdown quietly of metal to not freak out the managed money traders. Because when that short squeeze happens, there's not enough silver to pay it back. You know, as we talked about before, one out of every 18 contracts at this rate will get metal and 17 will be cash settled. And, you know, that's 1,800% over extended, more paper by 1,800% than there are bars backing it. And it continues to be drawn down every single week. We're getting to that point. So everything is spinning and spinning and spinning in so many different areas. Where do you focus? My focus has been in two places for two years. The move away from the dollar by 80% of the world through BRICS and the Belt Road Initiative and all of these countries that we have incentivized through weaponization of the dollar to move against us. And what does that mean? And the drawdown of supply. I've talked about these two things on your show almost entirely for two years, from the others to the market being uh, defined by the inability to get product to the Belt Road Initiative, Tier 1 asset and gold, and the de-dollarization through BRICS in all of these countries. This is what I am focusing on and nothing else. And the rest of it is noise. The rest of it is complete and total periphery noise. Yeah, it matters. But these are the two things that are going to shape, I think, all of our lives moving forward, and especially those that 
are in the precious metal space. So we'll keep talking about it. And I'll tell you, when I see Fox News, Fox News come out and the headlines on Fox News say that Russia and China may be preparing for gold-backed currency, but expert assures U.S. dollar safest currency today. Sure it is, today, until they issue that gold-backed currency. And then everything that is in the deep rest recesses of, of the darkest nightmare you can have financially, they start to come true. I hate to say that, but it is true. And when you get little crumbs by the elite like this, on top of all of the de-dollarization, the remover, removal of counterparty risk, and the insider selling on strength in the equity markets, and all of these things happening, on top of everything else, uh, you know, buckle up is all I can say. And you were warned, and you were warned a lot. And you got to do it before your eyes confirm what your gut is telling you is coming. Well, Andy, we got to cut it there. And... Uh... Always appreciate your presence here with us and on the behalf of all of our viewers. And thank you, viewers, for being here as well. You guys make it possible. You make this whole channel possible. And all these visits with Andy Sheckman. Andy, all of our viewers appreciate your your perspective, your, your on, feet on the ground, eyes looking forward view of keeping us focused on what we really need to be aware of and not getting distracted by the noise. Thanks, as always. I hope so. I appreciate that. Um, you're one of the few people who... Um who really gets it in this world. I love being here with you. I Like I always say, it's very cathartic to me to be able to speak this way because most of the people who know me in my real life, I don't speak this way to because the message is one that is not a popular message. And um, those that are willing to open their eyes and their mind and think outside the box are people that I like to speak with you're at you're at the top of that list let's do another live stream together at some point here as as things are getting scary heading into the midterm and whatnot and i'm sure will be uh, a lot to talk about so over the next few weeks i'd be willing to do that and until till then or until next week i um i hope you and everyone else out there uh, stays well and um keep your eyes open i think things are going to start to speed up here even more than they already are Thanks, Andy. Thanks for being here. Stay well. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A-plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we will let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations, and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be double boxed fully insured and labeled discreetly with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Elijah, my brother Kaiser, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.